There is an image comparison with a Navi 10 GPU on the left, an upcoming big Navi aka Navi 21 on the right. Now these chips are essentially the GPUs or graphics card chip you find underneath the graphics card cooler. As we can see from this image made up by the TechTuber Cortex, we can see that there is a huge difference in size between Navi 10 and Navi 21. And in today's video guys, I've gathered most leaks and rumors in regards to AMD's upcoming Radeon RX 6000 series cards and we're gonna try and answer whether AMD's got what it takes to beat Nvidia. So the obvious question, do you think they got what it takes? I want you to pause the video and down below I want you to put either yes or no. Also, if you're getting any value from any of the videos on this channel, can you hit the like button? It would help the channel out a ton. Let's go back to the video and talk Navi 10. In case you don't remember, the Navi 10 is a well-used GPU. It can be found in several of AMD's Radeon RX 5000 series cards. And this includes the top graphics card, the Radeon RX 5700 XT. And so this is the biggest first-generation RDNA GPU. Now, because of the nature of the silicon lottery there would typically be more than just one graphics card made from one particular GPU. Typically we find at least three or four different variants based on the same GPU. Now, taking Navi 10 as an example we see that they use this chip in six graphics cards in total all with slightly different names where the top GPU variant is called XDX and the lowest XME. Taking a look at the leaks and discoveries around Navi 21 we see that Rogue Games been able to find four variants of this GPU and according to WJM47196 from Shippel, this said chip is said to come in both 12 and 16 gig variants. Based on that info, the lineup could look something like this. Again guys, these are rumors but it gives you a better picture what things least could look like. Now you probably heard this a couple of times before but AMD has a total of 3 GPUs planned for the Radeon RX 6000 series. We got Navi 21, 22 and 23. Where 21 being the largest and 23 being the smallest. And up to this point there's been rumors that Navi 21 would measure 505 square millimeters and we think it could pack up to 80 compute units which with all things considered could make it fast enough to be a threat to the RTX 30 90. Now Cortex, who actually leaked the GPU, went ahead and measured the Navi 21 GPU to a whopping 536 mm squared. That essentially makes it more than twice as big as the previous top graphics card from the red team, the RX 5700 XT. As I mentioned earlier, AMD seems to be planning at least four variants of the Navi 21 ship. By the way, this image, guys, is just speculations based on what we know so far. It may not be accurate but it puts a better perspective what the graphics card lineup could look like. Anyway, according to Cortex, this GPU is said to be used in both Navi 21 XL and Navi 21 XT. In other words, there might be another two variants that we haven't been able to discover yet. And this begs the question, how come the ship on the right is so much bigger than previous generation? It's a good question. It seems that AMD is going all in with the Radeon RX 6000 series of cards because making a ship of this size is actually quite expensive for several reasons. Now if we take a look at what AMD said about upcoming big Navi, people that work at Radeon Technology Group seem quite confident that they can disrupt the 4K gaming space with these 6000 series cards. Based on leaks and rumors, it does seem like AMD's got a chance to challenge Nvidia's RTX 3000 series cards and possibly even beat them. Now there are a couple of reasons for this, first and foremost, while Navi 10 or first Gen RDNA features several elements of another architecture called GCN, which most likely made RDNA less optimized for gaming. AMD decided they wanted to fix that. And so with RDNA 2, AMD has been able to develop the architecture even further, and they've been able to create a completely new architecture with feature sets specifically for gaming. This includes hardware-based ray tracing, variable rate shading, and their own DLSS upsampling technology, however, based on rumors from several credible leakers such as Red Gaming Tech, we don't think AMD's upsampling technology will be as good as DLSS from Nvidia. And the same goes for ray tracing performance. From what's been leaked so far, it does seem like RDNA 2 will do ray tracing very well and it might perform better than Nvidia's last generation cards. However, it seems like it won't be able to quite reach the RTX 3000 
3000 series of ray tracing performance. In terms of manufacturing process, we think Navi 2 will be based on the very same N7 Plus nodes as the next gen consoles, and this would obviously translate to more transistors than before. Now, AMD is promising 50% performance per watt improvement, but according to Paul on Red Gaming Tech, this could be as good as 60% per compute unit, which would be a huge achievement. This new process node allows for higher clock speeds than ever before and for what we have seen from rumors, it does seem like Navi 2 can run in clock speeds as high as 2.5 GHz. Does that seem unlikely? Well, don't forget that PS5 can boost well over 2 GHz. And in terms of performance, we have seen leaked benchmarks as well as reports of Navi 21 reaching 22 teraflops of FP32 compute performance. However, that will be a quite a lot lower than the 29.77 teraflops that the 3080 can output. Based on that info, it seems AMD is a bit behind, however, it is too early to draw any conclusions. Let's talk about pricing because this will be the make it or break it for Big Navi and the Radeon RX 6000 series. And from the look of it, it does seem like AMD's got a plan here. While 7 nanometer is said to be more expensive than Nvidia's 8 nanometer from Samsung, the 7 nanometer ships have been in production for quite a while now. These ships guys are said to have very high yields which means that very few GPUs are broken or damaged in production and on top of that AMD seems to be doubling down on the Infinity cache which is a GPU cache on this generation much thanks to Paul at Red Gaming Tech who leaked this and by having a large cache on every GPU AMD can make the bus width smaller while not losing any performance this is said to be a cheaper manufacturing solution than having a wider memory bus like Nvidia Another benefit of manufacturing Big Navi on a more advanced process node is that it will be less power thirsty. That would essentially make developing of a suitable cooling solution for these cards less costly. So finally to answer the question, can AMD beat Nvidia? I think they definitely got a solid shot here, but most of this comes down to pricing. If AMD can undercut Nvidia, Big Navi doesn't even have to beat the 3080, but if RDNA 2 and Big Navi Navi turns out to be very expensive, I think they possibly gonna lose. Unfortunately, we are gonna have to wait till October 28th until we have the answer, as things like pricing are often set at the very last minute. So what do you think? Can AMD beat Nvidia? Let us know down below.